I'm sure you've heard the news. Why has the UK's economy stopped working? A nation steeped in history. Once the sun never set on the British Empire, its economic might was unmatched. From the Americas to Asia, its influence spanned the globe. Today the picture is different. The UK faces a complex economic reality. Uncertainty looms. Historian as S2. The UK's current economic woes are deeply rooted. Decades of accumulated debt have created a precarious financial situation. Each crisis, from Brexit to the pandemic, has added another layer to this burden. Emerging economies challenge the old order. The UK finds itself needing to adapt, to find its place in this new world. The old certainties are gone. The UK's current economic woes are deeply rooted. Decades of accumulated debt have created a precarious financial situation. Each crisis from Brexit to the pandemic has added another layer to this burden. Historian as S2, the world has changed dramatically since the height of the British Empire. Globalization has created interconnectedness, but also fierce competition. Emerging economies challenge the old order. The UK finds itself needing to adapt to find its place in this new world. The old certainties are gone. The challenges are undeniable. Debt, global shifts, internal divisions, these are formidable obstacles. But despair is not an option. The UK has faced down storms before. Politician as S3, the path to recovery lies in addressing the root causes of its economic malaise. It requires confronting the debt problem head on. It demands strategic investment in education, infrastructure, and innovation. It necessitates fostering a spirit of unity and shared purpose. The UK's future is not preordained. The choices made today will determine the course of the nation's destiny. Now some debt is normal. Countries borrow money to invest, just like people do. But when debt gets too big, it becomes a problem. Economist, as S1, the debt mountain isn't just big, it's growing faster than the economy. This means less money for essential services, for education, for healthcare. The UK's debt problem didn't happen overnight. It's the result of a perfect storm of events. First came Brexit, a decision that divided the nation and shook the economy. Businesses were uncertain, investment stalled, and the pound took a hit. Then, just as the UK was trying to find its feet, the COVID-19 pandemic hit. Lockdowns brought the economy to a standstill. As if that wasn't enough, Russia's invasion of Ukraine sent shockwaves through the global economy. The UK, already vulnerable, felt the impact acutely. Here's the problem with a mountain of debt. It creates a vicious cycle. High debt means less money for investment. Less investment means slower economic growth. Slower growth means less tax revenue. And less tax revenue means more borrowing. This is the debt trap, and it's a difficult one to escape. Governments need to reduce debt, but they also need to stimulate the economy. Ignoring the debt problem is like ignoring a ticking time bomb. Sooner or later, it's going to explode. The consequences of unchecked debt can be severe. High debt can lead to higher interest rates, as lenders demand a bigger return for the risk of lending money. In extreme cases, a country with high debt might even default on its loans. This would be catastrophic, leading to a loss of confidence in the UK economy. The UK's debt problem is serious, but it's not insurmountable. There are solutions, but they require tough choices and a long-term perspective. The first step is acknowledging the problem and committing to fiscal responsibility. This means getting spending under control. It means making tough decisions about priorities. It means ensuring that every pound spent is used effectively. But cutting spending alone isn't enough. The UK also needs to boost economic growth. This means creating a more competitive business environment, investing in education and skills, and fostering innovation. By addressing the debt problem head-on, the UK can secure its future prosperity.
Walk down any high street in the UK and you'll likely see a sign. Help wanted, staff needed, now hiring. The UK has a worker shortage and it's impacting businesses across the board. Brexit, the pandemic, and long-term demographic shifts have all played a role in shrinking the UK's labor pool. The shortage is particularly acute in certain sectors. Hospitality, healthcare, and transportation are all struggling to find the staff they need. The lack of workers is a major drag on the UK economy. Addressing this shortage is crucial for the UK's economic recovery. Remember the promises of Brexit. Take back control. We'll be better off on our own. Well, for many businesses, the reality of Brexit has been anything but rosy. One of the biggest blows has been the exodus of European workers. Before Brexit, the UK was a magnet for workers from across the European Union. They came for opportunities, for a better life, for the chance to contribute to British society. But Brexit changed everything. The free movement of people ended. New immigration rules were introduced, making it harder for EU citizens to work in the UK. This has left a gaping hole in the UK labour market. The COVID-19 pandemic was a global tragedy, claiming millions of lives and wreaking havoc on economies worldwide. The UK was hit hard, both in terms of health and finances, but the pandemic's impact on the labor market is still being felt today. One factor is long COVID, a debilitating condition that can leave sufferers unable to work for months or even years. The exact numbers are unclear, but it's estimated that hundreds of thousands of people in the UK are living with long COVID. The pandemic also prompted many people to rethink their priorities. Some decided to retire early, while others sought out more flexible or fulfilling work. This shift in attitudes towards work has further shrunk the UK's labor pool. The UK, like many developed countries, is facing a demographic time bomb. Its population is aging. People are living longer, which is great news for individuals, but it presents challenges for the economy. An aging population means a smaller pool of working age people. This puts a strain on public services like healthcare and pensions, as there are fewer taxpayers to support a growing number of retirees. The UK needs to find ways to encourage older people to stay in the workforce for longer. Attracting skilled workers from abroad will also be crucial. The UK's worker shortage isn't just about numbers, it's also about skills. Many businesses are struggling to find workers with the right qualifications and training for the jobs on offer. This skills gap is a major drag on productivity. It's preventing businesses from growing and innovating. The solution lies in investment. The UK needs to invest in education and training, equipping its workforce with the skills they need for the jobs of the future. This means focusing on STEM subjects, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, but also on developing soft skills like communication, problem solving, and teamwork. Closing the skills gap won't be easy or cheap, but it's an investment that will pay dividends for the UK's economy and its future prosperity. The COVID-19 pandemic was more than just a health crisis. It was an economic earthquake leaving deep scars on the UK economy. The sudden halt of global activity, the lockdowns, the uncertainty, it all took a heavy toll. Businesses shuttered, some never to reopen. Supply chains, those intricate webs of global trade, were thrown into disarray. The government, forced to borrow massively to support businesses and workers, saw the national debt balloon. But the pandemic's impact went beyond the immediate economic fallout. Lockdowns, while necessary to curb the spread of the virus, had a paradoxical effect on the economy. On one hand, they forced businesses into a state of hibernation, leading to job losses and a sharp drop in economic activity. On the other hand, the sudden shift in demand from services to goods, coupled with factory closures and transportation bottlenecks, exposed the fragility of global supply chains. Products, from microchips to toilet paper, became scarce, leading to delays and price hikes. This perfect storm of reduced supply and pent-up demand 
fueled by government stimulus measures, created an inflationary pressure cooker. Prices began to rise, eroding consumer purchasing power and further hindering economic recovery. Just as the UK economy was beginning to emerge from the pandemic's shadow, a new crisis struck, the energy shock. The global surge in demand for energy as economies reopened, coupled with geopolitical tensions and Russia's invasion of Ukraine, sent energy prices soaring. The UK, heavily reliant on natural gas for heating and electricity generation, felt the impact acutely. Household energy bills doubled, businesses struggled to cope with soaring energy costs, and inflation reached levels not seen in decades. This energy crisis exposed the UK's long-standing failure to invest in renewable energy sources and improve energy efficiency. The government, caught off guard by the scale of the crisis, scrambled to provide financial support to households and businesses struggling with energy bills. The combined impact of the pandemic, supply chain disruptions and the energy shock culminated in a cost of living crisis that gripped the UK. Inflation soared, eroding the value of people's savings and outpacing wage growth. For ordinary families, the crisis meant making difficult choices, heating or eating, new clothes for the kids or paying the rent, the rising cost of essentials, food, energy, transportation put a strain on household budgets. The government's response, a mix of one-off payments, tax cuts and energy bill discounts provided some temporary relief. But it did little to address the root causes of the crisis, low wages, insecure work, and a social safety net riddled with holes. The COVID-19 pandemic and the energy crisis served as a stark reminder of the UK's economic vulnerabilities. They exposed the fragility of global supply chains, the dangers of over-reliance on fossil fuels, and the urgent need for greater economic resilience. The UK, like many other countries, now faces a moment of reckoning. It must navigate the complex transition to a low-carbon economy, reduce its dependence on volatile global markets, and build a more resilient and equitable society. This will require significant investment in renewable energy infrastructure, energy efficiency measures, and green technologies. The challenges are significant, but so too are the opportunities. By embracing innovation, investing wisely, and prioritizing the well-being of its people, the UK can emerge from this crisis stronger and more prosperous. Imagine stepping into a house you've just inherited. It's grand, with a storied past, but as you open the door, a musty smell hits you. The roof leaks, the wiring is faulty, and the foundation is crumbling. This is the state of the UK economy that the new government inherits. Years of economic mismanagement, coupled with the triple whammy of Brexit, the pandemic, and the energy crisis, have left the UK economy in a precarious position. The new government faces a toxic cocktail of soaring inflation, stagnant growth, and a mountain of debt. The new leadership, whether it be the Labour Party under Keir Starmer or the Conservatives under Rishi Sunak, will have little time for a honeymoon period. The public is demanding action, but the solutions are far from simple. The new government must confront these challenges head on, but it must also be wary of making rash decisions that could further exacerbate the situation. The path forward requires a delicate balance of short-term fixes and long-term solutions. Section 2. Public Expectations versus Economic Realities, a Delicate Balancing Act. The new government faces a daunting task, meeting the public's expectations while grappling with the harsh realities of the UK's economic situation. Years of austerity measures have eroded public services, leaving many feeling disillusioned and left behind. The public is clamoring for better health care, improved education, and affordable housing. They want to see their hard-earned taxes translate into tangible improvements in their lives. However, the government's ability to deliver on these expectations is constrained by the dire state of the public finances. The mountain of debt incurred during the pandemic, coupled with the ongoing cost-of-living crisis, leaves little room for maneuver. 
The new government must find a way to reconcile these competing demands. It must be honest with the public about the scale of the economic challenges while offering a clear and credible plan for a brighter future. This will require tough choices, prioritizing essential services while seeking innovative solutions to deliver them more efficiently. It will also require rebuilding trust with the public, demonstrating that their concerns are being heard and acted upon. Section 3. The Global Stage – Navigating International Pressures and Uncertainties The UK's economic woes are not unfolding in a vacuum. The global landscape is fraught with uncertainty, from the ongoing war in Ukraine to the specter of a global recession. The new government must navigate these choppy waters with skill and determination. Brexit, once touted as a path to greater global influence, has left the UK somewhat isolated on the world stage. The new government must work to repair relationships with European partners while forging new alliances on the global stage. The war in Ukraine has exposed the UK's dependence on global energy markets and the fragility of global supply chains. The new government must prioritize energy security, investing in renewable energy sources and reducing reliance on fossil fuels. The UK must also adapt to a changing global economic order, with the rise of China and other emerging economies challenging the established order. This requires investing in innovation, developing new technologies, and fostering a competitive business environment. The new government must be adept at diplomacy, building relationships with key allies and navigating the complexities of international trade agreements. The UK's economic future depends on its ability to thrive in a globalized world. Section 4. The Brexit Hangover – Untangling the Economic Consequences and Seeking New Opportunities Brexit casts a long shadow over the UK economy. The new government faces trade barriers, labor shortages, and economic uncertainty. The end of free movement leaves businesses struggling to fill vacancies. Addressing labor shortages while ensuring fair immigration is crucial. New trade barriers add costs and bureaucracy for businesses. The government must smooth EU trade relations and explore global opportunities. Brexit uncertainty makes planning and investment difficult. Clarity and stability are needed to restore business confidence. Brexit offers both challenges and opportunities. The UK can now forge its own trade deals and set regulations. Seizing these opportunities can create a competitive, dynamic economy. The new UK government stands at a crossroads. This is a time for bold leadership and long-term vision. The decisions it makes today will shape the country's future. The easy path is austerity, but it has devastating consequences. The bolder path is to invest in the future. Invest in education, infrastructure, and green technologies. This is not a time for timid incrementalism. The UK needs a bold plan for economic renewal. Imagine a tightrope walker carefully navigating a high wire. One wrong step, and it's a long way down. That's the challenge facing the Bank of England as it tries to tame inflation without tipping the UK economy into a deep recession. It's a delicate balancing act with high stakes for everyone involved. Inflation, that insidious beast that eats away at the value of your money, is a major headache for policymakers. In the UK, it's been running rampant, fueled by a perfect storm of factors, soaring energy prices, supply chain disruptions, and pent-up demand after the pandemic. The Bank of England's primary weapon in this fight is interest rates. By raising the cost of borrowing, the theory goes, people and businesses will spend less, demand will cool, and inflation will gradually fall back to the target level. Sounds simple, right? Not so fast. The problem is that raising interest rates too aggressively can choke off economic growth, leading to a recession, a period of economic decline, job losses, and business failures. It's a classic case of damned if you do, damned if you don't. Interest rate hikes are often described as a blunt instrument. They impact the entire economy, not just the specific areas where inflation is running hot. Like a ripple effect, the impact of higher rates spreads outwards, affecting borrowers, spenders, businesses, and ultimately, everyone. 
For borrowers, higher interest rates mean higher monthly repayments on mortgages, credit cards, and loans. This eats into their disposable income, leaving them with less money to spend on other goods and services. For some, it could mean the difference between making ends meet and falling behind on their bills. For businesses, higher interest rates make it more expensive to invest and expand. This can lead to delays in hiring, cuts in investment, and slower economic growth. In extreme cases, it can even lead to business closures and job losses. The impact of interest rate hikes is not felt evenly across society. Those on low incomes with high levels of debt are disproportionately affected. They often have less savings to cushion the blow and are more likely to be in precarious employment. The mortgage time bomb rising rates and the threat to homeowners. For many in the UK, their home is their most valuable asset. Rising interest rates pose a significant threat to homeowners. Many took advantage of cheap mortgages at historic lows, but as rates rise, so do monthly mortgage repayments. This increase could strain finances. Fixed rate mortgage holders face payment shock when remortgaging. Some may face financial difficulty, even foreclosure. The UK housing market could be impacted. The Bank of England is aware of these risks. Section four, the global interest rate. Tango, the UK's dependence on international capital flows. The UK economy, like a dancer in a tango, is linked to the global financial system. It relies on foreign investment to finance its government debt and current account deficit. Rising interest rates can attract foreign investors seeking higher returns. This inflow supports the pound and keeps borrowing costs down. However, this dependence makes the UK vulnerable to global sentiment shifts. Loss of investor confidence can lead to economic crisis. The UK's ability to attract foreign investment is crucial for its stability. Seeking stability in a world of economic uncertainty. The Bank of England's task of managing interest rates is akin to a delicate dance. Balancing inflation risks against recession dangers, navigating global financial complexities. No easy answers, no guaranteed outcomes. The global outlook remains uncertain with geopolitical tensions and energy crises. The Bank of England must adapt, providing clear guidance. Success depends on actions of the government, businesses, and consumers. Section 1. The Productivity Imperative – Unlocking the UK's Economic Potential We've journeyed through the UK's economic landscape, exploring the mountains of debt, the valleys of worker shortages, the storms of COVID-19 and the energy crisis, and the precarious tightrope walk of interest rates. The picture might seem bleak, but amidst these challenges lies a powerful solution, unlocking the UK's productivity potential. For too long, the UK has lagged behind its competitors in productivity growth. Like a rusty engine, the economy has struggled to generate the dynamism and efficiency needed to compete in the global marketplace. Addressing this productivity puzzle is not just an economic imperative, it's the key to a more prosperous future for all. Boosting productivity requires a multi-pronged approach. It means investing in education and skills, equipping workers with the tools and knowledge to thrive in the 21st century economy. It means embracing automation and technological advancements, not fearing them, to streamline processes and create new opportunities. Unlocking productivity also requires addressing the UK's infrastructure deficit. Investing in transportation, digital connectivity, and renewable energy infrastructure will not only improve efficiency, but also attract investment and create jobs. It's about laying the foundation for a stronger, more competitive economy. Section 2, A Nation Reimagined, Embracing Innovation, Collaboration, and a Fairer Society. Boosting productivity is not just about numbers and economic indicators, it's about creating a more innovative, collaborative, and fairer society. It's about fostering an environment where businesses can thrive, workers can prosper, and everyone has the opportunity to succeed. The UK has a proud history of innovation, from the Industrial Revolution to the Digital Age. Rekindling that spirit of ingenuity is crucial for developing new technologies, creating new industries, and finding solutions to the challenges facing the nation. It's about embracing a culture of experimentation and risk-taking, where failure is seen as a stepping stone to success. 
collaboration is equally important. Breaking down silos between businesses, universities and government, fostering partnerships and knowledge sharing can accelerate innovation and drive economic growth. It's about creating an ecosystem where ideas can flourish and translate into tangible benefits for society. A more productive economy must also be a fairer one. Addressing income inequality, ensuring fair wages and decent working conditions, investing in affordable housing and accessible healthcare. These are not just social imperatives, they are economic necessities. A fairer society is a more productive one, where everyone feels valued and motivated to contribute. Section 3. The Path to Prosperity A collective effort, a shared vision, a brighter future. The path to economic renewal for the UK won't be easy. It requires a collective effort, a shared vision, and a willingness to embrace change. It demands leadership that inspires, not divides, policies that empower, not burden. The UK has faced daunting challenges before and emerged stronger. It's time to tap into that spirit of innovation, that legacy of resilience, and that unwavering belief in a brighter future.